Hey guys, welcome back to DCS and welcome back to the learning series in the DCS F-18C Hornet. In today's video I will be covering the most basic uh, form of landing which is a straight in approach. So this is not going to include carrier landings, it's not going to include um, overhead landing patterns on an airfield. So this is going to be just the very basic straight in approach landing and explaining um, your a on AOA speed and stuff like that. So with that said, I need to remind you guys that I am still learning the uh, DCS F-18C Hornet. If I do make a mistake, uh, please feel free to correct me in the comments section. Now we're here in the uh, Persian Gulf map and we're going to be landing at uh, Shiraz Airport which was newly added uh, by Eagle Dynamics. So uh, Shiraz Airport is straight ahead over there. I have the, uh, uh, the jet on active pause. Now first things first. I'm going to turn the uh, left DDI onto the HSI, basically the compass. When we have the compass rows, we're going to turn on TACAN, right? Turn on, and we're going to clear it. It's cleared now. Now we're going to type in 94 X ray. 94 X ray is the channel for Shiraz Airport. Now, if you look at the HUD, you get 15.5 miles and the code for it, as well as a marker on the uh, on the heading tape as well as here on the left DDI you can see it's marked for us so it's straight ahead it's 15.5 miles ahead of us Shiraz Airport now if you guys are wondering uh, how to find out the Takan station for a particular airfield you go to the F10 map you zoom in on your particular airfield and it's normally written over here now you can see where the, where the Takan symbol is it's channel 94 now if it's not written there you can click on the name of the airfield and there we go you get the aerodrome data so basically you have your ATC frequencies as well as your TACAN channel so 94 x-ray now let's go back and type in the ATC frequency as well so we'll bring up uh, COM1 we we'll clear that and we type in 118100 and enter and that should be it in terms of the radio okay now guys, one thing is really important for you guys to understand. The parameters for the landing of a straight in approach of an F-18C Hornet is to start from, you start from 5 miles out from the airport at an altitude of 1,500 feet barometric. Now, I don't have the, uh, the uh, altimeter uh, set up, which is down there. I don't have the altimeter zeroed to the uh, QFE of the airfield. So I'm just going to go, uh, go and uh, change the altitude information to radar so from barometric to radar with that switch and now on the HUD you see um, the altitude the box next to the altitude with an R next to it so basically radar now let's go ahead and ask for clearance from Shiraz airfield Okay, roger that. So runway 29. Now, allow me to explain to you guys um, a few, a few um, aeronautical uh, concepts. So, guys, let's talk about angle of attack. So you guys are going to have to forgive me for my crudely drawn uh, diagram here. But uh, let's go ahead and explain what angle of attack is. Now, angle of attack is the angle between relative wind and the cord line of your wing. Now in this diagram, the black, the part that's been shaded in black is the wing, is supposed to represent the wing of the aircraft. The blue line and the blue arrow indicates the direction of relative wind and the red dash line represents the cord line. Now I'll, I will explain what each of these mean. The cord line is a, basically an imaginary line that you draw from the uh, leading edge which is the front to the trailing edge of the wing which means the back so from front to back you draw a line and that red line represents the cord line now relative wind what is what do they mean by relative wind relative wind isn't the same as the direction of the wind meteorologically speaking right so they're not talking about the uh, the direction of the wind for example, the direction of the wind on that day could be southeastern, southeasterly 
or it could be southwest or north or whatever. Relative wind is wind that is in relation to your aircraft, and particularly the relation to your aircraft's uh, flight path. So relative wind will always be uh, directly opposite to the aircraft's flight path. So in this case, if we can imagine that the aircraft is moving forward, right? So from right to left, relative wind will be opposite to that. Now the angle of attack is marked by the uh, um, dashed yellow line. So as I, I'm going to repeat it again, uh, angle of attack is the angle between the chord line and the relative wind. Now most aircraft will tend to stall about um, in, in an angle of attack of about 18 to 20 degrees. Not all, but most aircraft will generally stall. Now also um, you can see that um, if we when we drop um, our flaps, you can see that that changes the uh, the chord line, the angle of the chord line, thus changing the uh, angle of attack. Because if you have a look, the chord line ends at the um, at the end of the uh, trailing edge of the wing, and when we drop our flaps, that dramatically changes the angle of the chord line. Now just that was just um, something that I thought that I would explain so that it makes sense to you guys uh, uh, what angle of attack is. Now in the F-18C Hornet, uh, you need an angle of attack of 8.1 degrees. 8.1 degrees for both uh, carrier landings as well as airfield landings. Now why, why 8.1 degrees? Why not 10.2? Why not 5? The 8.1 degree um, angle of attack was chosen because it gives you the all the optimum, um, basically, um, um, position for when the arrestor hook touches the um, the surface of the uh, the carrier deck. Basically, it is the optimal angle for the hook to basically catch one of those arrestor wires. Now, let's get back to the actual uh, um, flying. Okay guys, welcome back to the cockpit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off active pause. And there we go. Now in order for you to drop your landing gear and your flaps, you need to be at a speed of 250 knots or less. So we're going to go ahead and drop the landing gear. Yep, and there we go. You can see that bracket, that E bracket. Now at the moment, all I'm doing is I'm trimming up. I'm trimming up to try and catch that E bracket with my flight path marker. And there we go. I've, I've caught the, uh, the uh, E bracket. Now I'm, I'm actually increasing throttle now, I'm increasing increasing throttle, and there we go. So at the moment we're, we're basically on AOA, okay? So at the moment we're on AOA. Now uh, I'm not going to use my, um, my flight stick to move the, to change basically the pitch of the aircraft at all. I'm just going to be doing that with the uh, throttle. Now as you can see, you can see the uh, yellow donut, and there we go with the throttle. You can, if you decrease throttle, the pitch will drop. If you increase the throttle, the nose of the aircraft will pitch up, basically. Now, at the moment, I'm on AOA. Uh, I've changed the left and right DDIs, basically. The left DDI to the HUD, the right DDI to the uh, engine page. So I, I, I understand uh, where my, uh, where my uh, throttle position is. So, again, explaining it. Um, when we when we see that yellow donut, yellow um, light on the side on the ind indexer, that means that we're on an angle of attack of 8.1 degrees, uh, and that is the optimal landing uh, uh, angle of attack. Now, at the moment, uh, as I explained before, you should be starting your landing procedure from five miles out, okay, at a thousand uh, at 1,500 feet barometric when you're trying to land in at an airport like this uh, with a straight in approach. Now I, I started off at 15.5 miles and now we're, we're, getting, we're starting to get closer but the reason for which I did that is because uh, I can have time to explain the various different things and also to show you guys what uh, on AOA speed is basically. Now guys, it's very important that you uh, keep an eye on your descent rate right there. It's next on top of the um, 
the altitude uh, indicator on the HUD. So it's at the moment showing minus 200 and 300 and something. Now, when you're actually about to touch down, it is very, very important that that be no more than, no greater than 750 feet uh, per minute. So you need to watch out, watch for that um, descent rate. Now, other than that, the F-18C Hornet uh, lands with a... Uh, all right. Okay, thank you, Tal. Now, the, the, land, the landing glide slope for the F-18C Hornet at 5 miles at 1,500 feet is, a, uh, is, is at negative 3 degrees glide slope. So as long as you abide by that and, and, and you are on, uh, on your uh, angle of attack um, speed, you should be fine. Now this aircraft is very, very easy to land. It's probably the easiest aircraft ever in DCS to land. However, it's very difficult to master. It is difficult to try and master uh, in, in, in that I mean it's difficult to do it by the book, you know? Uh, it's dif very difficult to maintain everything exactly as it is laid out in the manual. Now at the moment, we're uh, closer than five miles, so we can begin our uh, descent our three degrees uh, glide slope. Now I'm putting the flight path marker using my throttle, not my stick. I'm not using the stick at all to, to pitch up or, pi or pitch down. I'm using the throttle, positioning the throttle in a way that the flight path marker is placed on the, uh, just on the front of the airfield, right? So just on the threshold of the airfield. And I'm on perfect AOA, all the way. So we're at three miles now. There we go. You have to be very, very gentle with the throttle. And that way you can control your your glide slope very accurately. There we go. So I'm gently checking the rate of descent. Make sure that we're not greater than 750 feet per uh, minute. Altitude. Altitude. This is actually very nice. There we go. So you don't have to flare at all. There we go. Perfect. You don't have to flare at all. You have to keep that angle of attack and that descent rate. And that's it. Just, just let the wheels hit the ground. Now, when you're on the ground, try not to move the uh, the rudder at all if your nose nose wheel steering is engaged, because uh, at high speeds your nose wheel steering has a lot of authority and you could get into trouble. Now, the landing is pretty much over. We landed at uh, Shiraz Airfield, which is the first time, by the way, that I'm landing here. Now we can go ahead and pull off the runway in the next taxiway. There we go. We pull off to the left. Now, as I said, it's it's actually very easy to land, but difficult to master. Now, guys, that's about it for this video and uh, and the uh, straight-in landing approach on the DCS F-18C Hornet. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you guys found it found it helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye bye.